it's so bizarre. Did you get a new camera? Bam, we're live. No, I just finally set up the one that I had. I had oh. to get some get some like cords for it, I guess, or connections. Hey, it looks good. What's the deal with your lighting now? Is it is it because the it's it's just darker later? No, I just don't have the curtains open. Ah. So you are kind of going into vampire mode. A little bit. There's randomly we'll have people like come by the house and like look in our windows. What? Yeah. And uh so I've been just closing them all the time basically, unless I'm not doing anything on the show. Hey, is that normal for uh, Nebraska? That's just like the neighbors feel comfortable doing that. They see someone working on the house. And so that's the kind of like you're just allowed to do that. Yeah, I think so. Because we've had uh, in California. Like, that means your shit's going to get robbed. Right. Yeah. This is like my neighbors or like the guy used to own the place. His friends yeah. will stop by because he hasn't told them that he moved. Oh, oh. So oh. people will just like run by the house and be like, oh, is uh, is Mr. H here? And I'll be like, hmm. No, and he's like, "Well, is he alive?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> wow, he was that bad. Well, yeah, I, I guess, I guess, as a, if the house is indicative of the state he was in, yeah, that's a fair question. Oh yeah, the dude's like super fucked up, and uh, yeah, well, I don't think we've heard from him recently, so it's very possible he's not around. But it's sad. Whatever. My son's been complaining about his. Well, all my kids were like on and off, like having this kind of weird sickness. Um, for the last month, a bunch of kids around here had it, and I swear yeah. it, it, this is going to sound horrible. But if I didn't have it, I wouldn't believe my kid that he was sick. Yeah, because I just don't feel good, but I can't put my finger on it. But it has—it's it's definitely my stomach. Really? Yeah, my That's shits are solid, and I'm not throwing up. But something's going on in my stomach. I just can't. It's not even bad or good. It's just like you, you know when you don't feel good, and so you kind of pay attention to your body. You can't fully be present. In the outside yeah. world because you're kind of like doing yeah it's so weird you just hate being sick like yeah the, last the, night the stomach feeling oh last night when i went to bed for an hour i just was like uncomfortable in my body yeah i get that i've had so little to drink uh, heidi croon maybe stop drinking spicy marks i haven't i've had so little to drink this month besides that i'm trying to think i haven't besides that wine i don't think i've drank at my house in a month wow uh you need sourdough well, that's funny you say that. You need sourdough because I the best I felt was when I ate uh, Dave's wife's bread. No, Castro didn't poison sourdough? Me. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Wow. It so, it's so good. Last time I tried to make sourdough bread, I had a starter. And they said you could either put it in. This is the first time I ever made sour, sourdough ever. Or I tried to make sourdough. And they said you can put it in the oven or you can put it like on like a high spot in your kitchen. Uh -huh. So it's like all the heat rises and so it's i don't know what it is exactly so i put it in the oven and put it like saran or a uh, yeah, plastic wrap on top and then just let it sit well yeah then that night my wife was coming home from work and she was like well we should we have like microwave pizzas or whatever so i went to go heat up the oven and i forgot that the sourdough was in there uh oh and it was in a plastic bowl with saran wrap and i just melted the bowl into the fucking oven rack. Oh, at the, it. at the Shattuckin? No, this is at a, one of my apartments when I was oh. in Virginia. It was very sad. Right. Um, my kid had whatever. Uh, everyone's like colonoscopy. Uh, Haley pegged you too deep. Stop chugging olive oil. Listen, uh, my kids have my one of my kids has it too. I took him to tennis yesterday. He's like, dude, I'll try, but I don't feel good. But he looks fucking great, you know? And, but he gets, he got out there for 10 minutes. He's like, and he's like holding his mouth. He's like, hey, I can't. Dang, yes really? Yeah. And it's yesterday, I probably threw up like 10 times in my mouth. I just swallowed it back down. But, jeez. Yeah, weird, right? That is a little weird. I, like my whole life, I've never had like a stomach, uh, queasiness. I mean, I mean, I have, but it's like, you know what? That you don't feel good. You throw up and then you feel better. Have you been drinking a lot of coffee lately? Uh, no, actually, less coffee than normal. Less coffee than normal. Oh, weird. Yeah, less coffee mm. than normal. My my sister said I should have some ginger. Not one person has um suggested that. What's bubble gut? I think it's usually when I have the shits. That's what I call bubble guts. Oh no no my shits are my shits are fine. I took I took just fucking rocks this morning. 
like like looks like I eat carnivore. But I did notice this morning when I looked in the mirror that I did look a little thinner. I think I ate like I'm eating less because I don't feel so good. Really? Yeah. Oh look, there he is. What do you know? What do you know? Hey. Hey guys. Good morning. Oh, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Better than that bridge? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? Hey, crazy, have you seen the have you seen the time lapse video of it, Greg? Yeah. Um well, I don't it, know about time lapse, but I think it was yes. Yeah. Does that tell you anything about it? I'm not I'm not seeing it, anything here other than they ran into the bridge. Somebody was saying they saw like a Knights Templar logo on the side or like something crazy. Like it's it's a sign. Hey, look at the last minute. They actually do try to turn away. Look at the very last minute before it hits. It tries to turn away, veer off to the left. Yeah, it's like they get power right before it hits and then they're just a little too late. Some, oh. some maritime guy was saying that it would take five miles to turn that boat in a circle and a mile and a half to two miles to bring it to a stop at its cruising speed oh wow and they had a, they had some kind of propulsion problem it's like a hey, full-on power problem it's like shut off a few times hey so it was it was uh it was supposed to go under that bridge and and the mayday saved a lot of lives they're saying yeah, it's supposed to go under the bridge. That's like a it's a thoroughfare for bridge or for uh, the cargo boats to get through. It's a pretty busy harbor. That's that. By the way, that's eight times the speed, is what that says. Yeah, it's 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 not a fast moving boat, but it takes forever to stop it. And uh, if you watch the video, look at all the cars going by, cars going by, cars going by, and they're screaming "Mayday!" I mean, they're in an absolute panic. But the cars have stopped by the time it hits. Are there any other um, camera angles? Mm. There would have to be, right? That's fine. One, one, one thirty in the morning. Man. Yeah, at the very last minute, it looks like. Say that again. You broke up for me. At the very last minute, the guy—it looks like the boat tries to turn left. Our our right, but his left, right before it hits. Unless it's that impact that causes it to jerk like that. God, that's so wild. Hey, um, it doesn't sound like it's a th thirty thousand people. They said cross that bridge in a twenty-four hour period on average. That's not a very busy bridge, I don't think. That's that's how I would see it. I was trying to compare that to Camelback or something. I, I think we beat that. I want to see um, how, how many bridge, how many cars cross the uh, Golden Gate or the Bay Bridge every day? How many cars cross Bay Bridge? For people who don't know, the Bay Bridge is the bridge um, between uh, Oakland and San Francisco. Oh, 260,000. I guess 30,000 is not that small. I mean, the Bay Bridge is just wild. It's an eighth. An eighth. An eighth, That's yeah. A big difference. But I think the Bay Bridge is like six lanes. Yeah, it, it's yeah. I don't, it, it kind of my um. Do you my, do you have fond when you when you sit you say the Bay Bridge? Do you get a warm and fuzzy? Yeah, as a little kid going crossing it, you know. Yeah, I just and, think of sitting in fucking horrible traffic and the smell of urine. Oh, when I was a kid, we used to cross <laughs> it, and it was fun. I loved looking at all the. Uh, I loved looking at all the just the structure. When I, like I finally settled in Santa Cruz full time, it was 1995, mm -hmm. and uh, all of my friends loved to go to the city. We were going to San Francisco. That was the thing to do: go to the city. Yeah. And uh, I was like, dude, it smells like piss. Yeah. As soon as you get off the freeway in the city, you're smelling urine. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't work past that. I eventually did. I eventually got over that. What did you guys do there? You go there for day trips, like to see what, like the um, the 
air show or some shit or or for yeah, bars at night or what? I was new to town and I hung out with I got befriended by lesbians and we went to the city. Oh yeah, that's a good spot for lesbians. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, you didn't really have to cross. Did you guys cross the Bay Bridge? You guys didn't though, right? Would or would you stay up on the left hand side when you went there? Like you were going to the airport, or would you go the I guess you could go either way. I, I can't say for sure. I know we we when we would go to uh what was our place there, the St. Regis? Yeah, yep. We'd get off before you right before the bridge, right? Immediately. Right, before. right, 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 right. We would be on the west if side you of the bridge. Missed that off ramp you're going over the over the yeah. water. Damn, good memory. Yeah, Fourth Street, I think. Damn, great memory. Hey, Greg. Yesterday, someone was asking about um, the the nutrition seminar that CrossFit used to have that Rob Wolf ran. Yeah. And then and then it stopped, and we never went back to it. We never had a nutrition seminar. Can you share the history of that? Like, what happened? Was that the Paleo Zone argument, or what happened with Rob? You guys were close, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think on some level we probably are still, even though we don't talk and may not. Um, I mean, it used to be – let me even go back a little further. The, someone, the, final someone thing, gave, the final thing was there was a, a long simmering problem on a couple of fronts. And – uh nothing was really being done about it, but then he got super shitty with Greg Everett towards Dave one night. Oh, that around that, the black box summit, that was a straw that broke the camel's back. Well, and, and I called to talk to him about it and he wouldn't return my calls. And I left message after message after message. Then I had Dale leave the message. You're fired. <laughs> what oh, am I going to do? Right. It's a weird thing when an employee won't return a call. But but there was an over certainty and overstating. I you know I have trouble listening to nutrition where we're presenting mechanism after mechanism after mechanism of some hypothetical interaction. It very likely could be, and it might be that you know chemistry so well that these are these are probabilities. But you're still in the space of conjecture, and you're talking about something that nobody has ever measured, but you see it so clearly. And that was all just rough for me. There's so much that we can say um, that I don't need to, you know, this came, this came up the other day on a, at, a, at a talk I was asked to give for a group of fellows. But uh, I don't, I don't want to say too much and start another war. But I have no interest in the divisions between paleo zone scarsdale none of it none of it really matters to me you know look reduce your refined carbohydrate consumption until your uh, uh epa to arachidonic acid level becomes uh, greater than one or flip that less than one if you want um get me an a1c uh uh five ish and uh and let's see uh 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 Let's, oh, triglycerides. I want them to fall off the scale where the number has no meaning. And things, things, you know, mid double digits starts to look that way. You're outside of the, the test's reliability. But you do any one of those things and, you, and you'll do the other two. So pick your metric and pick your fucking way of doing it too. I don't really care. I've got a, I've got a anti-intellectual stepbrother that doesn't eat white food. Because he figured out that it interfered with his golf and his tennis, and he had, he made it to the pro ranks in both. And he was he was a very good athlete. And so I said, "So tell me about your white food thing." And he says, "White food makes you fat." And it was bread, rice, sugar. But the kid wouldn't touch a glass of milk because it's white. And I I don't need to iron that out. I'm not. I just roll my eyes and go on. His model his model worked. It's all he needs milk, right? If it doesn't, if it doesn't have a nutrition label on it, it's food. If it does, don't eat it. How do you like? There's one that works too. That too, right. will, that too will give you the right EPA to arachidonic acid, triglyceride, and A1C. Next right. fat diet. 
um, this guy, now that um, um, the context was this, some guy said, Hey, I took the level one. I loved it. I just felt like it was really light on nutrition content. And then I was thinking, Oh yeah. And that was a very popular seminar though, too. Right. The nutrition seminar. I think I could say all that's worth knowing about nutrition in a one hour up. Yeah. You, did you ever consider bringing one back? I felt like there was discussion about it, but for but and it sounds consistent to what you, yeah, you just I, said I, about the chemistry. I don't just remember now. the particulars of it, but that would that would make sense. It needed the right champion. It wasn't. Uh, I don't know. How do you say it? You think Zoe, Zoe would be the right person for it? Perfect. Yeah. She is the only person that I have heard talk about nutrition in a very broad and general sense scientifically. The only person. She approaches it systematically, and I find in that a bit of profundity. Now, remember, her PhD is in mathematics from Cambridge, and her doctoral thesis was on the unthinkably bullshit math that constitutes nutrition research and science. So, that, so there's three strikes against Zoe right there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No shit. I, she's a PhD in mathematics. In maths, which is what she says. That's a distinctly British kind of a Welsh. She was always good in maths, so she uh -huh. got a PhD in it. God, that's wild. I mean, she obviously comes across as extremely intelligent, but there's nothing. Um, she's she's so smart about her. She's so smart and was so so profound and, and correct on the statins along with with uh, Malcolm Kendrick and and Asim Malhotra that they they had to be called war criminals and delisted from Wikipedia. Was she de was she taking? I don't know. If she was, but oh, Malcolm oh. was for sure. Yeah. And for what? There's nobody. He's of all the mesperts. He I think has some of the most charm. Likeability, good natured, uh, and he, I don't hear I don't I don't hear controversy in anything he says. They're taking percents of percentages. It's bullshit, you know. I mean, what are you what are you gonna do? Argue about it? No, you have to delist them. It's like Ufi Ravenskov, like Bill Buckley was on the political front, like Roger Kimball is. There are some people so effective that. None of these little half-witted liberal 25-year-old chicks that put hearts on the dots of their eyes wants to take them on. They don't, they just have a lot of, he doesn't exist, doesn't exist. They can't do that. They can't respond on that level. Zoe Harcomb's not on Wikipedia, by the way. She's, She's on not. Rational, rational Wiki, but not real Wiki. There we go. She had to go. I would, I would like to be taken off of Wikipedia someday. I think that would be a... I think the people that aren't listed are, are better people than the ones that are. Right. Well, technically, you're not on Wikipedia. CrossFit is. And your name is within the CrossFit Wikipedia. So you're not even on Wikipedia either. If you click so. his name, it doesn't give you a Greg Glassman? There used to be one, I think. I don't think so. No. I, no. I don't know. There isn't. Oh. Uh, Tyler, thank you for the 99 cents. Uh I don't know. This is interesting. I don't think Greg has an opinion on this. We'll find out. What is Greg's opinion on CrossFit's recent inability to divine terms? Feet together on the V-ups, toes, or heels over the bar and uh, toes to bar. Basically, they've been some open workouts. There's been some inconsistency in what the rules are versus what's being allowed to the athletes to perform. Yeah, Dave must be just freaking <laughs> It's not the I kind know. of thing he likes. Uh, Jake Chapman, uh, Greg, uh, uh, does Greg know what to eat to stop persistent erections? <laughs> yeah, less Viagra. Cereal? Don't eat blue, the blue food. You turned me on to this movie called um, No Safe Spaces. 
Yeah. It was, the guy, it was the, uh, Adam Carolla and the guy from, uh, who's a friend of yours now. And then the, uh, yeah, Dennis Prager did, did a yeah. movie. And um, do you remember? You know, my, the, my buddy in Idaho uh, just went on to become chief of staff for them. For Evergreen? Uh, College? My buddy Ben. Chief of staff for who? For Prager U. Oh, no shit. Moved to LA in my old neighborhood. Uh huh. I met him through his parents, who we ran into at North 40 by accident. I was admiring their giant Rottweiler Gus. You've met him. He came to the house eventually. The one that fell in the pond or jumped in the pond. Yeah, yeah. Like an Idaho dog, right? You bring him to a koi pond and he jumps in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, all 200 pounds of them. But uh, I ran into them and the, I was admiring the dog and then we left and I was walking out to the car and the man that was with the couple chased me out. And he says, my wife is insisted that I follow you. She thinks you're Greg Glassman. I'm sorry to bother you. And I said, yeah, I am. And then they introduced me to uh, Todd Herman, mm, mm. who uh, filled in for Limbaugh 500 times when his health was failing. Mm -hmm. Interesting people. But yeah. it was their son, Ben, who was in the county assessor's office and allowed me to pull off the impossible uh, 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 Oh, doc. Success with my with my doc, with my peer on the lake. Herman was also the guy that escaped Washington, right? State? Yes. But I don't know if that's that's yeah, we don't can't tell that story. Sounds, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, hey, so so that move do you remember the premise of that movie, uh No Safe Spaces? Like or, or like the Brett Weinstein sure, character in there in the Evergreen College? Yeah. And um, he was a full, he was a full liberal, right? Yeah. When he went there, and then from there he kind of catapulted into fame. He parlayed that into during COVID having uh, that you know, a huge, widely successful podcast with his wife. Have you seen that? It's like no, called the really. Dark Horse Podcast. I think Dale was on it. Dale Saran was on it. Cool. Um. Anyway, I wanted to show you this clip. He was on Tucker the other day. Hey, aren't these guys like 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 uh, Taibi and uh, I mean, aren't they aren't they happier out of the hive, even if even if canceled? I was actually thinking about that today. About I was that never movie. I was never fond of that set, and and nor was that set fond of me. But I've enjoyed my canceling, and I think I would enjoy it even more had I been cast from the lot of, of fucktards. I, I was thinking about that this morning in the shower too. I was thinking about that movie, The Matrix. I was thinking, does anyone ever take the blue <laughs> pill back? Like, does anyone ever go back? Like you're asking, no. hey, do they- No, no, do no, they, no, 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 no. The intellectual migration of, of going from conservative to liberal, mm -hmm. it's, it's been done a few times for votes mm -hmm. and, and maybe thinking it's gonna increase your, uh, your uh, pussy score, but uh, you know, popularity kind of thing. But uh, no, that's a, it doesn't work that way. Wow. You just nailed it. I, the, uh, the, I know, I do know a handful of men, maybe more than a handful, a dozen men who are conservative, but parade around as liberal to maintain their vagina in their life. Wow. I never thought Dude, of that. It starts with it starts with the shut the fuck up because you don't want the trouble. That's you, you. It's that way in Santa Cruz. Hey, we were just talking about Rob Wolf. Rob Wolf, um, on becoming an affiliate, went to the SBA on his campus at Cal in, in Chico. Student something union. Small business administration. Oh, and okay. Advisor was looking at the website and told him that all the American flags and the uh, guns and the soldiers all had to go, that the whole thing was jingoistic. Mm -hmm. And Rob came to me and said, that, asked me if I knew that the flags and all the guns and all the soldiers were bad for our business. Jingoistic, uh, extreme patriotism, especially in the form of aggressive or warlike foreign policy. Wow. Derogatory, even. So having flags and guns. Wow. Incredible.
Eden Beaver, good morning, Coach Sevy and Caleb. Good morning. Hey, Eaton. Uh, Braylon Tender, fitness competitor, is, is, is competitive CrossFit a fruitful effort? It's all competitive. That's what the stopwatch does, right? I mean, whether it's with yourself or someone else. Yeah, it, you know, almost anything you can measure, you can race, right? What's yeah. the realization? I'm going to show you this uh, this video. This is um, – so you don't think anyone goes back? No, once someone's red-pilled, they don't want to be put back into the uh, – no, it'll happen one item at a time. I mean, watch the watch the evolution of RFK Jr. This is he's it becomes easier to do. You you eventually develop this sensibility where you go, that sounds like some bullshit double speak. Right. You start he started with, hey, something's up with these vaccines, and then it just spreads to like, hey, something's the, up recently, with Recently the Department of Defense announced that they had uh, uh, that these right-wing rumors of uh, Travis Kelsey and, and Swift um, were false and blah, 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 and they were never employed by the DOD. And I, it sounded so odd to me that I could only come to one conclusion. And But I first had to hit it by Jim Watt, right? This is yeah. what Jimmy says. Yeah. And I go, Jimmy, DOD announced today that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift were never on their payroll and that these are right-wing bullshit rumors. And he goes, yeah, that's what we used to do when it was the DOJ. We'd have the DOD say they had nothing to do with it. And I go, wow. that was exactly what I thought I was hearing. That's exactly what I thought. There was a Department of Homeland Security or Health and Human Services, another department. There was no need for DOD to deny them on a payroll department of energy so as soon as they start doing that th that's like almost like huh it's a weird it's a weird protestation it's weird protesting i haven't looked into the diddy hey, stuff it's nick jonas it's nick jonas saying i've never been sponsored by coca-cola and i got a picture of the fucker sitting there in front of a coca-cola wallpaper with this right with his fucking brothers right and it turns out no coca-cola sponsored the jonas brothers tour not him the tour right right very clever yeah i mean you you just you just you you learn you learn the pattern of lies it jumps out at you Oh yeah, you can just look up uh, Nick Jonas Coca Cola, and that's what I did. I put it into Google, and I found four thousand images of him. Yeah, and I'm gonna guess his agents not letting him sit in front of that fucking wallpaper without something, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, th there's the glue. Yeah, and I know that's why he weighed in on the diabetes thing because he got his chain yanked by his keepers. I remember when he denied that. Uh, Nick Jonas has been a part of many advertisements like Bayer, uh, Diet Coke, Dexcom, and many other brands. Oh, it wasn't Coke, Greg. It was Diet Coke. No, it His was massive. It, <laughs> it, we, we used the image. It was. I remember. I, I saw that image too. I was just looking for it. Yeah. Yeah, that was wild. God, what a douche. I got that. I got. I got thousands of letters from what Lustig had told me had called the T1 terrorist moms, and the American dietitian or dietetics, whatever the hell they call themselves now, um, can get the American Diabetes Association get them all to send letters and tell them what to write. And they'll. Send I remember them. that they showed up on the on the blog too. Do you remember that? I got. I got like 5,000 emails overnight. It was the greatest thing. And it was the easiest thing to build filters for. That was actually fun. I got where I could actually make them stop completely. Anything about your kid and type one diabetes, boom, it went in the bucket and they just, they filled up so fast. It was super cool. Yeah. For those of you who don't uh, know how that works, uh, when Greg had a little tussle with Jonas, 
uh, publicly. Um, the the blog, the CrossFit blog, CrossFit.com, filled also in the comment section with shitloads and shitloads of what were obviously a group <coughs> of moms who would uh, do anything that they the were told was, was offensive. The logic was saying that, uh, and I didn't even say it. You guys, fucking bullshit, attributed that to me, but I didn't care. You know, I I pay you, you did it, I I eat it. But uh, the what was it that we stuff, your dead homies thing? That was oh. Oh, I, didn't, I never not. said it, but once it's been attributed to me by my own staff, I'm going to work with it. And uh, uh, the open diabetes thing, you know, but right. uh, to say that that uh, sugar causes diabetes and I have some obligation to say type two, that's just that's just complete horseshit. It's a made up rule to serve the soda interest. And if it needed if it needed to be refined, then we'd have a problem with saying that smoking causes cancer. You'd say, I, I got brain cancer. That's not like you're, you're fucked. You're smearing my ass. We don't say every time lung cancer, right? Right. Right. Horse them out for your dead homies. That's what we that's what we posted that. And yeah, yeah. And you got stuck. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I didn't say it, and you got me into a fight I didn't mind having. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't miss any of that. Um, t- like tell me, waking up in the morning and like, okay, it's you know, it's four a.m. What the fuck's going on? Somewhere in the world, there's a problem, and I could look through the affiliate email flow, and there it was. Sarah Lucas working all night long, taking care of business. Kathy, that was a great team. That was a great team. The affiliate girls were so capable, they drastically reduced my legal costs. I don't have a way to to, to measure that exactly, but my estimation would be that they saved me millions of dollars annually. Oh shit! Listen to this. What uh, ABC News says: the rest of Glassman's statement was so aggressive it was not suitable to print. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking witch? What kind of witch? What kind of witchcraft is that? God, that is fucking ridiculous. And That's we're not going to link the guy it. in the CrossFit community that took me on for writing that didn't didn't. Uh, uh, didn't get my point. What was it? Something like fuck Nick Jonas. He and his sponsor oh, that's right. are part of the problem. Fuck Nick Jonas. How crazy is that? That that's the, le- I mean, that's, that's the media today. That's why I'm having trouble believing the P Diddy stuff. It's like every article yeah, I there, read. There, let's go back, Sevy. That's the, that was the key line. They just left out the fuck Nick Jonas. It was so aggressive. We can't and then lied that. around the thing. This is about the scourge of type 2 diabetes and its underlying causes is sponsored Coca-Cola is a significant contributor to the diabetes epidemic, both with product and marketing spend. Yeah. And then the part two, and then it was fuck Nick Jonas. But uh, there's no, there's, they don't even deny what I'm saying there. God, that was so good for our brand. Holy fuck. For people who don't know how, how gnarly Coke is uh, in Mexico, I think the stat is is 55% of calories consumed by the people on average in the country of Mexico is from soda pop. Look, I I, my thing was I didn't have a I we went on a soda tour and I explained there that we're not on the methamphetamine tour. It's not the heroin tour. There's all kinds right. of shit that's not bad for you. Right. Uh, but what what's important to understand about these guys is they're weighing in with both feet in the health and fitness space right and they're corrupting the science of nutrition and they're the they're the biggest player in the fitness space the biggest player coca-cola is yes exercise as medicine is is a bigger deal than crossfit it's baked into the affordable care act it's never going to go away and CrossFit's going to get regulated out of business. Alex Peters, that's why. There's, no there's no one at the mothership. There's no MBA that gives a fuck about that gradual process. 
You'd have to care about the industry or the players involved on some kind of personal long-term level. You'd have to have a 10 year view. Josh Everett told me he's been at, he's been at uh, Naval Special Warfare 15 years now. I would have said he's been there four years. <laughs> 15 right. fucking years. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's wild. It's, it, it's, it's crazy. Time flies. Then you die. We'll see about that. Okay. Um, uh, so, so the movie, no safe spaces. Um, there, there was that, there was that, uh, event, by the way, would you, you would recommend that movie to everyone, right? Absolutely. And I thought the animation was terrific. And I thought Adam's, uh, portrayal of his mother was hilarious. And yeah. I'm going to, I did a joint project with him on a KROQ, uh, documentary the radio mm -hmm. station in la mm -hmm. and uh it's it's doing it's a uh, it's getting a lot of attention it's not even done it, it's a great movie too and the fact that these two teamed up i think uh um uh prager might be a um he, a devout he's jewish but i think he might be a devout christian and and adam's a devout atheist and you see where they're um logic intersects and it's a it is a it's a profound movie I, Prager's just Jewish. He's not Christian, is he? He's not. I don't know. I just assume. I don't think so. No, but he he's... surrounded himself with Christians, right? His organization sort of par parades as this. Uh... Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm. He, oh, look at Carolyn M. He's not Christian. Okay. I just assumed he, what, he was. Yeah, he's because... Jewish. Okay. Modern Orthodox. Yeah, it would have been a recent conversion. But, but, but his cohort seems to be uh, devout Christians. All the people he's using on his uh, platform, well, or you could say it even it, it transcends religion. You, they have yeah, similar. I mean, they have their values align. Yeah, I mean, what what makes it likely that that farmers and construction workers hold similar uh, similar political and social views? Why is that? Uh, he's ecumenical. Thank you, Caleb. Representing a number of different Christian churches. Ecumenical. Mm. Yeah, I am too. And a non-believer. I'm like I'm like Frederick Hayek. I'm all all everything I value is only found in Judeo-Christian cultures. And so if you want to get rid of the Jews and the Christians, I'm going to, I, I'm going to be in your way. By the way, someone wrote in the comments the other day that, um, Sevon is still a libtard. He just parades as a libertarian. So Greg will be his friend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, you hang out, you hang out with, with, uh, someone with a mature worldview long enough and you're just going to see enough instances of, you know, where someone goes, okay, Hey, watch this. Look how this turns out. And you go, well, fuck it. did. Yeah, of course it did. You know, my contractor was telling me about a guy that was, he was getting complaints of road rage on the guy. He was like a Vietnam vet, a good dude and all great on the job, but people were calling, he tried to kill me and pulled me out of my car. And, you know? So he said he'd had like, like two or three of those and I and uh we finally got him to stop and I go, you had to fire him for something else though, right? And he's oh my God, how how did you know? That guy's laboring under a pronounced character flaw. <laughs> what do you mean you had to fire him for something else? I wasn't able to follow that. What do you mean by that? I just it just you know, he wasn't saying that we got rid of him over that. I was like, yeah, this there's a problem with this guy. It's gonna show up somewhere else. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Like, you know, we, we had the leak in this house here and the uh, uh, contractor called his roofer and the roofer went went on the uh, Wayback Machine or Google Earth. You Google Earth. And he turned the time back on it. I didn't even know you could do that. And he watched the building of this house. And what he detected, what he saw is that the orange uh, membrane to seal the deck only half of it had been put down when the Tylers came. And then he watched the box of 
of membrane disappear from the job site. And so they said, he says, when you pull that deck up, it's only half orange membrane. So I was like, I'll be goddamn, that's something else. So I go, I tell you what, we got two other decks. You got to break into them and look. And they go, you got no leak. I go, you, let's see what we got. So we tore into the one on the on the girl's side of the house upstairs. And we filled a 40-yard dumpster with black rotten wood. Wow. Now, what led me there was that the character flaw that cheated the proper construction somewhere will manifest itself countless places, at least where the where the where the, those guys are concerned, where that sub is. Junction boxes with no cover, full of water, right? You know, like okay, the electricians also got the got the bad work ethic. I just had my skateboard uh, 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 ramp rebuilt. I got the skateboard ramp on my driveway. It's like pro uh, like a seven to ten thousand dollar ramp. By the time you get it in and have it assembled, you had to reskin it, Seth. No, so that's what's interesting. So there's a masonite on top, right? The stuff yes. called skate light that's crazy expensive. It's like five or six hundred dollars a sheet, and so they pulled all that up, and that was fine. And underneath, all the plywood had rotted. And my neighbor next door is a contractor. Is like, hey, watch this. He's like, I'm going to build your ramp better than before. He relayed all the plywood, and then he spent three hundred dollars buying gallons of this stuff that he said waterproof wood so well you could build a shower out of it. He's like, this, this could be now a shower. Bin. What is it? Can you do the commercial? What's that shit? Uh, I'll, I'll ask him. It's pink. Thompson's water seal? No, no, no. It's like, it's pink. It's, it's whatever it is. It's pink. And, um, hey, Caleb, uh, you know, they, they bend, they make commercial buildings with, with sheet metal, you know, instead yeah. of studs, right? Mm -hmm. You think someone would do that in skate ramps? You could do the whole thing in the factory, all the bending, CAD cam it all out, right? So oh, you yeah. skate on metal? Yeah, just no. You put that put that shit over the metal. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Oh. Probably lasts a lot longer too. Hey, any anyway, then they put the um, masonite down in the in the ramps better than new, and so he, he same thing. When I moved into this house, brand new, I don't know if you remember this, but when they pulled up my floors because there was a broken pipe underneath it, and I'm on a slab, they said, "Oh shit, we're lucky we did this." I said, "Why?" They said they put the membrane on upside down that goes between the slab and the hardwood floor. They're like you would this whole house would have filled with black mold in a couple of years. Jesus. How how, we've, how been, about we've been asking our builder for recommendations for subs on the current house, you know, uh -huh. like hey, who's your electrician? Who's the roofer? And his the talent around John Schultz um is amazing. It's a it's a curation of 30 years of collecting the best subs across the spectrum that 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 can be found really impressive um is john schultz the guy who brought the pool from europe yeah yeah for for a customer yep yeah um <laughs> that's when you talked about building the uh you know the steel frame for underneath the skateboard ramp i thought about that pool that's a crazy story entire can you find that caleb see if they like look up glass pool or it'll probably just be with it me came from Italy. it was just a single mold pool yeah single piece of construction glass i believe and it cracked and it delayed the home start and you can't per you did they save it i forget the story did they save the pool I don't, or not? I don't, no i think it had to be done again holy shit and and they sent the pool back, right? I don't remember the, the, all the details, but I thought I thought you told me they wanted to analyze it, so that maybe they sent it back. Yeah, they, or they might have sent someone out. I forget. Oh yeah, that's right. That is what you said. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. not one like that. No. No, Greg has <clears throat> Greg's buddy built a house that had a pool that was just basically a giant glass bowl that was brought from Italy, and they put hey, it. Hey, the, the castle up on the hill. Remember above the, the house we used to rent. Remember yes. the castle up there, and that was a uh, uh, Kurt uh, Holland's job. It had that, to pull over the living room or something. Yeah, yeah, and you could, and, and the ceilings were high, you know, 15, 20 feet, but it was the bottom of a pool, and it was super bright, an amazing skylight. 
but you could actually see a bee on top of the water, through the water in the glass, 15 feet up. Wow, that's crazy. Did you ever go in that house and see that place completed? No. I wonder about it though often. That was fun when we stayed up there. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to see that. Yeah, I think it's something like that, but big. Huh, that's cool. Damn. That takes balls to do that. Okay, so that guy, Brett, so everyone go see the movie if you haven't seen it yet. No safe spaces. You'll be so happy you saw it. It's a, it's a great... It's a great movie. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Brett Brett Weinstein. He's one of the main characters in the movie. Um, he was a uh, extremely, extremely far leaning left professor at Evergreen College, and here he is now uh, talking to um, Tucker Carlson. But look at look at there. There's some of your friends in these pictures, by the way, who they call kind of like the um, the dream team. If people somehow put aside the obvious danger to their ability to earn and maybe to their lives of saying what needs to be said, then we greatly outnumber those we are pitted against. They are ferociously powerful, but I would also point out this interesting error. So I call the force that we're up against Goliath, just so I remember what the battle is. Goliath made a terrible mistake, and it made it most egregiously during COVID, which is it took all of the competent people, it took all of the courageous people, and it shoved them out of the institutions where they were hanging on. And it created, in so doing, the dream team. It created every player you could possibly want on your team to fight some historic battle against a terrible evil. All of those people are now at least somewhat awake. They've now been picked on by the same enemy. And yeah, all right, we're outgunned. It has a tremendous amount of power, but, but we've got all of the people who know how to think. So I hate to say it, or maybe I like to say it, but I don't think it's a slam dunk, but I like our odds. If people um, you, do you think well, you that we got? We here's we have two things on our side that are important. Um, the truth. Three things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but it's a, it's a smarter crowd on the right. Right. Enough, for every guy in overalls missing teeth for all those people that fit the the stereotype and hell i might even you might even put trump in that category there's at least one joe biden for every how many what are the odds for every trump there's at least uh, one joe biden right so the left sense of being smarter than the right is a, is a complete illusion and at the highest reaches, the Roger Kimballs are smarter than any liberal. Hmm. By long shot. William F. Buckley, smarter than any liberal. So we, you get the truth, the brains, the guns. The truth, the brains, and the guns, those are the three pieces? Those are, there's, so I mean, if... If they're as serious about their hatred of us as they claim to be, if they really want to disenfranchise a candidate in the name of democracy through bullshit, spurious uh, litigation and, and criminal charges, feels like feels like civil war. They got a movie coming out. I saw I'm, I'm going to I'm going to vote for Trump because they want to take him off the ballot, so I can't vote for him. Right. Otherwise, I'd never vote for him. I'm an RFK Jr. guy. I can't help it. What do you think of his running mate? <laughs> Who's that? She, she was married to that Google dude for 15 years. That's what I think. That must have been weird. Nicole Shanahan is her name. Yeah, I don't know anything about her. 
Who is she married I, to? Like Larry Page I, or something? I know that. Say that again, Greg. She grew up in poverty in Oakland. Uh, father with a drug problem, you know, single mom. I mean, it's she's a hardworking gal. I can here's the thing. I what I know about her is that he picked her, and so I assume that she's a person of of intelligence and values because I know he is. Shanahan, thirty eight, is a California lawyer, philanthropist who has never held elected office. She le oh, and this is the CNN, of course. AP um, names. But oh, this is AP. Okay. Uh, Kennedy's uh, campaign has spooked Democrats who are fighting third uh, party options that could draw support from uh, President Joe Biden. Without the backing of a party, Kennedy faces an arduous task to get on the ballot with varying rules across the 50 states. Uh, he has secured access to the ballot in Utah. Um, he and an allied super PAC, American Values 2024. What's a super PAC? I think it's a way of it's a way of uh, raising money for politicians that helps you work around rules that limit how much people can donate. Mm. So basically, I think there's limits on. I, I don't know this for a fact. Maybe Greg will clear it up. But um, there's limits to how much money you can donate to a candidate, and so these independent super PACs are formed, and then you can donate as much money as you want to them, but then they end up with all the influence. Something and like they that. and they they have to maintain a. a firewall between themselves and the campaign. And I know in the case of, uh, of RFK Jr., they've done a tremendous job of that. I've spoken with both and they don't talk. Hmm. Uh, Seema Beaver, she would uh, come into Lululemon in Palo Alto and buy $10,000 worth of clothes at once. One time I told her orange wasn't a good look for her and she said, thank you. Wow. Oh, that's only six pairs of pants. <laughs> that's great what a what an amazing thing to tell someone where where is that that Lou, is that the lululemon that's oh no i don't know where that what, what's the one that's across the street from the apple store what city is that the apple store we used to go to is that palo alto or what city was that the one just right over the hill and there's a piece oh, of my heart uh, there gatos. oh los gatos all right oh uh sevog vartanian uh it's a legalized form of buying favors from your candidate if she wins or he wins <laughs> that's probably a more accurate uh, mr soros is a big super pack guy all right uh she was uh, very generous with all her friends she would just buy people stuff all the time give me a hundred dollar tip at the cash register wow sounds like someone else i know who would go into lululemon and buy stuff for all his friends and then tip the cashier thank you Greg. I mean, many a run to Lululemon with a bunch of people with Greg. You never know when you're going to need some ABC pants. What are those? We got seated. We got, uh, I got into uh, Ocean 44 here last night with eight of my kids. And uh, some you have eight family. kids? I have eight of them here. <laughs> eight of 10. Yeah. Still nine, but it's brewing. Wow. How was that? How was dinner? How was the how was the crew? Um, it was it was cool. But uh two grandmothers too, right? Eight kids, two grandmothers. Yeah, yeah. But I got in with uh hardly a notice and uh, you know, just it's so unlikely to to be able to pull that off. And they were so accommodating and put us in the private room and this the wait staff was incredible and I don't know it it inspired a hundred percent tip, you know, on what was an outrageous bill, but, uh, got the means to do it. And I wanted to know, I appreciate it. And I, I want to go back. I'd like to, on a, on a day's notice, be able to make a, get 12 people into a restaurant where otherwise it wasn't going to happen. And you, you, you form these relationships over time and they're, they're super valuable. We would be foolish to, you know, I mean, why look at, look at what we have going at cilantro's. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, you remember, uh, Puerto La Boca in uh, San Diego? Yep. We showed up there one time with 14 people and the waiter that loved us eventually ended up an owner of the restaurant, but Caleb, they actually were moving people that were eating. 
<laughs> and it was like, get your spaghetti and come with me or whatever, you know? Was the you guys can sit at the bar. We need this. Table. Yeah, they were moving people. There was people working their fork, and I, I felt so bad for them. We bought their meal. Oh, awesome. Didn't want to be disruptive to that extent. Yeah, of course. I'm sure they you're appreciated not, that after the you, fact. I'm good for that. You can if you if you want to pay for my meal, I'll move halfway through it. Hell yeah. You're not gonna like these next two stories, but there's hundreds of them. Uh one time it, it may have been at Puerto La Boca. I can't remember. But it was when the partnership with Reebok first started, and there were 15 of us who went to dinner. And I can't remember the the bill, but it was expensive. It was like twenty five hundred or thirty five hundred dollars. And um, Greg tipped the lady the same amount as the cost of the dinner. And no, of course, none of us knew that until the waitress came back crying. I don't know if you remember this, Greg. And she, she was a single mother, and her car had just broken down, and she had no idea how she was going to pay for it. And it she, was it it was intense. She was walking to work with a with a car in the shop. Wow! And then another time, it's slightly different. Um, this time, he paid for a whole restaurant's foods. Um, every, everyone's bill at the entire restaurant, which was less than our meal of twelve people. It was at uh, it was at the Silver Spur, and Greg and I walked in there, and it was like six in the morning, and it was just Greg and I. And I shit you not, I bet you sixty guys from Ice. Every single table in the place was filled with ice. And when we left, Greg paid for their bill. And then uh, the commander chased us, chased us out and gave Greg a hat that Greg gave to me. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I remember Linda asked us, rest in peace, if we would talk to her staff and let them know that they weren't there for them. Oh, that's right. That's right. The, cooks were, <laughs> the cooks were taking the burglar bars off the windows and we're going to leave. That's right. I forgot about that. Yes. Holy I shit. went in and talk, told the kitchen, no, no, no. These are for the Mui Mao, not not you guys. The Mui Mao. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that part. That was crazy. Yeah, and I they got were a hat. tripping. Yeah, you gave it to me. It's <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Hey, they, those guys had a neat story. They had a guy that was on their fugitive list. And they were getting ready to take him away. And he pulled him aside and he said that the girl in there will kill my son. And so they what? And they ran her. She had no wants, but they knew her. They, they could find enough about her to know she'll probably kill the kid. Wow. So they, so they unhooked him and took her for a drive and gave him a chance to flee. And he was actually, he was a, he was a fugitive. But he was wanted for chicken shit compared to what the shit this lady was into. They had a couple cool stories like that, right? Like basically, like, a, hey man, it's, it's hard work, and these are honest men trying to do good things for people. But they weren't going to take some father away from his son, and so they they got. And they, they also said they they weren't just scooping up illegals. Like you had to do some bad shit, like some really bad shit. These guys had come from seven different states and descended on Watsonville. You know, I mean, it was it. These were for these night were raids, right? Players. They said they started at midnight for night raids. They started at midnight yeah. or something. And then we ran yeah. into them at six in the morning at the end of their shift or some shit. Hey, I was in I was in Kauai when the feds showed up and they served uh, like a dozen federal warrants, uh, <laughs> felony murder warrants. So we had a dozen murderers just chilling on, you know, hanging on, 10. On the plane, did you say? No, hanging 10. The kids, the guys, oh. they were, they were active murder warrants that had oh, to be oh, oh. served on my little Kauai. Jeez. Um, th does, does RFK even, he doesn't, does he even stand a chance? Does he even, does he even get 1% of the votes? I wouldn't think so. I don't know, though. I what think he's he got a formula of, like, if he can get 15% from both candidates, he'll have more than them or some some magical number. Who I don't know. It makes the lesser of two evils feel fun to, to go for a long shot, who I think is an honorable man and, more importantly, capable of learning. I would imagine he has probably a better shot than previous independents or 
And you know what? We haven't seen how bad Joe and uh, and uh, and uh, Donald are going to be too. How what they're going to be? How bad? Oh oh. Like in their age, or are you just in what? No, just be? in that they grab them by the pussy moment, and and oh. Biden he might molest a little girl smelling her hair. <laughs> I don't know, man. Another There's, woman. That's anything's not his possible. There'd be no surprises except for anything that looked like intelligence coming out of either one of them. That would be a fucking shock if Donald Trump were to he, you know, he won't even he won't even read smart stuff that smart people write could write for him. JFK won't. Doesn't I? I've heard it. Or, or uh, sorry, uh, RFK. Oh, um, it says he's running at ten percent. Ten percent of the nation's vote. That's bigger than I thought. I my fantasy is that he truly is taking away votes from Joe. So I'm in. God, it's crazy. All the um, left wing um, outlets just fucking hate him. Oh, listen, I'm a sense listen, more money. listen to the insane shit they <laughs> say. I told the I told the super PAC folks I'll be back. Have you met him, Greg? Yeah. You did. Where did you meet him again? Uh, uh, Zoom calls. But he called after Murray Carpenter wrote that piece on me. He called me out of the blue. Oh, years ago. Years yeah. ago. He, he turned me on to. Uh, he got uh, Ralph Nader to call me too. No shit. It was funny. He came on the phone and he's, hi, this is Bobby Kennedy. And I was like, I just recognized the voice. And it's like, wow. And uh, I, I didn't care, but all I could think of is, I wonder how he got my phone number. Oh, yeah. Did you ever find out how? No, but it was interesting. But I know, I, I now, like, I think Emily can get anyone I can point to, put them on the phone. That's a good person to have. Yeah, journalists, journalists are good that way, right? Uh, Sean Sullivan, RFK's uh, VP is a left-wing crazy person. Oh, no. That's a bummer. We'll look into it. But you know what? I mean, if that's whatever it takes to, to get rid of Joe. Uh, there's a lot of crazy people in the Bay Area. That's that. I mean, a lot. How the fuck did Gavin? I mean, here's the proof of it. How did Gavin Newsom um, not get recalled after two million signatures? Hey, do you think I, I heard this thing the other day that just Joe doesn't even know either that like when they take him to the border, they clean up the border so he doesn't see the problem or the same way. You know how Gavin Newsom was in Target and those boys were stealing all that shit. They're leaving. And uh, he says, what the fuck's going on here? You think these people are just oblivious? They're just protected from it. You think they're in denial or oblivious or don't think it's bad? The problem. They don't care. They just don't care. Mm. Get elected. Being elected is all they care about. And then and yeah, repaying it's, not their, it's not their problem. Uh, what Democrat. Were, what were Pelosi? What were Pelosi and Gavin doing during the, uh, the lockdown? They were visiting uh, their favorite restaurants as if business as usual. Were they wearing masks only in public? You know, not even that. Not even that. Just for the photo shoot. As soon as the photo shoots were over, they would pull them down. This is this is the ideology that can't believe that the First Amendment that the framers would have intended for the First Amendment to hamstring uh, government. I know uh, you're referencing about the uh, Supreme Court justice, right? I am indeed. Terrifying thing to hear a Supreme Court justice utter. Terrifying. There were a thousand comments that said that's exactly what it's for. <laughs> you know why? Because that's exactly what it was for. It wasn't to protect me from my next door neighbor that's trying to get me to shut up. Do you remember during COVID when Newsom said, um, they asked him, hey, why aren't you releasing the truth about COVID? And he said, because the public's not smart enough to uh, to process it. So we're just telling them what to do. I mean, he just straight up said it. They're just not, the public's not smart enough. Let 
Where's a um sorry wad zombie use, uh, oh uh does Greg use a bidet? If, if I'm if I'm if I'm there I will. You have nothing against a bidet. Mm -mm. But you're not addicted to him. You don't need it. No, but I, you know, I, I think I told you, I heard Kid Rock, I was asked by uh, Stern what the best parts of being rich were. And he just instantly said it was his Pilatus and his Toto toilet, the airplane in the toilet. And I laughed. I was like, I. That's all it takes, right? That's all a man needs. There's a lot there. Uh, CrossFat, RFK will likely get 3 to 10% of the popular vote. It gives voters an out when one of the other two win to take no responsibility. Isn't that what they always say? The Democratic National Committee Sevog, uh, did not give RFK a fair shot at getting on the ballot as a Democrat nominee. Same thing that RNC did with uh, Ron Paul way back when. Oh. I don't really want Tulsi to be the... Uh, uh, Trump's running mate. She talks too slow for me. She talks. She's the only person who talks slower than RFK. She's she's good though. I agree. She's, she's good. I agree. She just talks so slow. God, I don't. It's going to be hard to find someone for Trump. I um. I was dumb in 92 and voted for Bush. Ross, Ross Perot was a prophet. Hey, why do you think it's going to be hard? Like someone just for him to, uh, um, I do, I do like Tulsi. I just, in all the interviews, I'm like, yo girl, spit that shit out. Um, uh, wh why do you say that Greg for just for someone for him to get along with, who's going to be able to deal with him? Like managing yeah. him is going to be harder than managing the, um, country. Well, you know, you, you want to balance the ticket, right? So he's from New York. So you might want to say, uh, an intelligent, rational, conservative from California. There's, there may be no such thing. I don't know. Or they, they would be also willing to hang out with him. If you balance him out, um, you find you find something that just wouldn't, just could probably couldn't tolerate him. Look, I don't know what he's like in private, but his his public persona is disgusting. A the deplorable comment. I didn't think it was directed at him. At, at the at us, I thought it was directed at him. Oh, Hillary's comment. Uh huh. I I hated it because I knew what she was talking about. Um, I find her deplorable as well, but she's she's on the end. Uh, um, uh, Pence was good until until he until he wasn't. I mean, he was a good soldier up until the end, right? He hung in there. He destroyed Kamala in the debates. He was a well, gentleman. He was a gentleman. No, you don't think so? <laughs> Kamala. I don't think it was hard to destroy Kamala in the debates. I mean, he 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 he's he's poised. But the, the only thing is, is when uh, when I hear Malcolm X talk about the white devil and close my eyes, I see Mike Pence, unfortunately. But maybe I, I would give I would give the uh, I'd give the Biden campaign 10 grand <laughs> if Kamala would do the Venn diagram thing in my uh, living room with my friends. And for oh, I'd, give him, I'd give him 50 grand if she do the yellow bus thing, too. The electrical buses, No yellow buses. Yeah, I think that was the one about. She talks about them being electric too, right? No, name. no. Well, oh. I didn't hear that part. Oh, she talks about a, the. I'm a Kamala expert. I think I've I've hunted down everything she said. I love listening to her talk. Dude, wouldn't that be so funny for your birthday? If like some people get magicians, some people get bands, and you're like, okay, everyone, we have Kamala hair. She's gonna do. This. I, when she <laughs> starts with, you know, the three circles. I want I, I want to shit myself. That's right there. I just think that's so fucking good. You can't, you can't make that shit up. You can't spoof her. Uh, the her her a caricature of her it becomes an impersonation. Kamala Harris mocked for gushing over a yellow school bus. They really can't let her talk in public. Oh, can we hear some of it? Oh, yeah, this yeah, will be yeah. great. Please. You can if you love a yellow school bus, right? Just. 
There's something about the, and, and most of us, many of us went to school on the yellow school bus, right? And it's part of, it's part of our, our experience growing up. It's part of, a, you know, a nostalgia and a memory of, of the excitement and joy of going to school to be with your favorite teacher, to be with your best friends, and to learn. Wow. So like she's it celebrating. It's like she got a new dildo. It's so wonderful. And oh she does it, she's done it several times. That's a regular riff. So she has these, she has these ups that she does. And yellow buses is one. Um, the Venn diagram thing's another. The other one I can't remember. It's such a weird turn of phrase. What is it? The the historical thing. Oh. Don't um, let is change what could be or some fucking thing. Yeah. I Googled that shit too to see if it actually had any meaning. You know what's really interesting, Greg? You've had a very close relationship with uh, my wife for 20 years now. And all of a sudden in the last two years, I saw it really develop around Kamala Harris content and um, October uh, 6th or 7th content. It's why you guys have probably all of a sudden upped your, your whole relationship has changed. You guys love the Kamala Harris stuff and you guys are very, uh, um, see eye to eye on the, slaughter, the slaughtering of Jews. Yeah. Just those, some of those threads I've been on. I'm like, wow, look at these two bonding over fucking Kamala Harris content. And, uh, slaughtering of jews you guys don't like you guys love kamala and you guys don't like the slaughtering of jews you guys are really bonded on those subjects i i i find it uh unbelievable that she's gotten as far as she has and it was it was unexplainable to me until i heard victor H davis hansen explain it victor david hansen explain it and he said that she came of age politically in the post retail politics era of California politics. There's no debate, no tough reporter questions. The party picks the candidate and the party and the candidate will win. And so you can, you can pick a, you can pick a fool, a person who's absolutely incapable of, of expressing coherent thought publicly. It's the Chauncey Gardner thing. Remember that being there? No. It's a great movie. Dumb and Dumber, the Joe Biden and Kamala Harris book of stupid oh, quotes. Shit, oh, wow. Wow. Now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, why do I know the name Chauncey Gardner? Why doesn't that... Uh, why, yeah, the why movie was being there. Pull that up. It was really good. And uh, forget the guy. I think he got best actor for it. But it was a, a guy who's a complete idiot that, that, that speaks, oh oh that's right speaks these fucking worthless platitudes and it's seen as significant and Peter Sellers yeah that's what, who it was it, it it's a good it's a good matchup it's a good, that's would make for a nice evening to watch being there and uh, uh, damn Greg 1980 for fuck's sake. What's the idiocracy? Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, that's depressing. That's a great movie. Watch Did that I... and Requiem for a Dream and put a gun in your mouth. Yeah, put yeah, yeah. Mouth. Those are. You remember my concept of uh, uh, therapy by cinema? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we we pulled Brian out of a deep uh, clinical depression with Requiem for a Dream. He the next day he felt he felt the burden lifted. It was like shock therapy. That's how that's how bad that that's how depressing that movie is. Rob Smith, one of the reasons Democrats don't have to do much for the black vote is because they know they can use rappers like Glor Glorilla Pimp to push their agenda while really offering no solutions or plans. By the way, the Republicans use their influence in very similar ways. This this clip is going to blow you away. This is CNN. I just, whenever I see clips like this and I see stuff like this happening on news stations, I kind of get embarrassed for, um, cause do you remember like when we grew up, Greg, our parents like watched the evening news. Do you remember that? Like they'd have Walter Cronkite and shit on, right? Can you imagine your dad seeing this now on the news? Wouldn't you be so embarrassed that he would have to watch this? Listen to this. This is wild. Here we go. Talk to you about what they wanted politically. Did they want your endorsement? They want you to help people get out the vote. 
hey, you know, they ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, talk politics, but I love the president. You know what I'm saying? I love everybody. And at the end of the day, the day got an end. If you ever wonder why uh, Democrats don't really think that they have to do anything for the black community, if you ever wonder why the left and Democrats and all of them never really do anything for the black community, it's because they know that they can get barely literate rappers like Glorilla, you know, to go to the White House, take a little selfie with Biden so that they can just go ahead and continue to push their propaganda to the people. To me, Like, if you are a thinking Black person and you see something like this, it honestly should really offend you. And it should even furthermore offend you that you've got a major news network that is giving this low-level illiterate rapper a platform to talk about politics. Look, Joe Biden and these Democrats and Corinne Jean-Pierre and all of these people know that they have to do absolutely nothing for the Black community. Why? Because they have already co-opted the entertainment industry, the music industry, all of the poison that they push out to Black people. They know that they can just pick a rapper, any rapper, and, and, and bring her to the White House and get her to take a selfie with Kamala or get her to take a selfie with Joe Biden. And then that's all they have to do for the Black vote. It's actually really pathetic. You can't even believe that's real, right? At the end of the day, the day right the end. what's the fellow's name? Rob Smith, is it? Yeah, Rob Smith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's not a black man on CNN. Right. They don't, right. They right. won't put a guy like that on. Unless you're speaking e- Ebonics and you're aggrieved, um, you're not going to, you're not going to be seen on CNN. He, you know, what's crazy. In other, words, in other words, if you leave the plantation, you're no longer black, right? And Biden said it, it fundamentally as much. If you're not voting for him, you're not a black man. Do they not vet their guests on CNN? Like, how how did that chick get on there? Dude, she's a half wit. Hey, how about uh, P Diddy? Yeah, what happened? Is, is he? Is, I every once again, every article I read just seemed like slander. Like I want to know exactly what he did. I want to see. Like, show me the fucking picture. The what was claimed in the civil cases is is tantamount to violation of 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 federal law for which there's no statute of limitations. If these, if there's any merit to these civil cases, it's just like R. Kelly. Is there a video of him doing any of this? Is there uh, any they, proof? If there, if there was, and he was stupid enough to keep it, they have it now. Did he or didn't he? Okay. Jake Chapman. <laughs> That's good. And and you know, there's a, there's another piece that could be a role. What if this has something to do with the trial in Vegas of the guy for killing Tupac? And what would the tell me? What's the connection there? Well, um, who was it? It was Fitty Cent that said uh, that uh, that that Diddy or Puffy lined up Tupac, laughed about it. I mean, it's kind of that's the that's what this guy that's on trial has been bragging that it was that it was. Uh, there wasn't, isn't that the story that P. Diddy ordered the hit? I think I have heard that. But once again, I, I, I just feel like it's all, um, it, it's like, it's, there's, it's just all hearsay. It's all just finger pointing. It well, just feels is, like just liberal the guy, slander. The guy that's on trial, I forget his name, Keithy something, whatever. Uh huh. Um, he had, proffered some kind of statement with LAPD where they guarantee where they promised uh immunity if you just tell them what happened so yeah we fucking shot him man you know and uh and uh, that was one of the other murders but anyways he 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 told the cops what happened and the deal was only good if he didn't tell anyone else and then he put it in his book. And so now it's fair game. So he's got his hands full. 
What was the guy's name? Remember? I don't know. I'll say the wrong. I'll say the wrong rapper. And... Explosive audio submitted as evidence involvement in Tupac Shakur's murder. Explosive audio recordings have been submitted to court as evidence in the murder case of iconic rapper Tupac Shakur, implicating hip hop mogul P Diddy. Oh, so it in is the, that it is the murder in the case in the assassination. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was I was thinking that it, it, that in the in the sex trafficking. At some this point, is just from a little while last month. The audio features uh, Dwayne Keefe Davis. Yeah. Uh oh, Houston, we're back. The audio features Dwayne Keefe Davis, a West Coast that. gangster, a suspect in two box murder, boasting about Diddy allegedly orchestrating the hit on the rap legend. The chilling two hour and twenty five minute secret police interview took place in two thousand eight with LAPD with. Keefe D claimed that Diddy offered him one million for Tupac's assassination. Yep, that's what he said. He he had a personal gripe because his nephew got beat up, but he knew he could get that million dollars. Tupac was shot on the evening of September seventh, nineteen ninety six, while driving to a club with Suge Knight. Despite Keefe D's claims of his involvement, Diddy alleged alleged connection to the murder remains unproven. Damn. I wonder when P. Diddy's last album. I wonder when if when his last I album can see out. him being uh removing stuff from a hard drive that they get oh you think that ha that has that audio hey i can't even share a screen anymore did you know oh there we go there it is damn that took forever that was weird he was he was freaking out while they were raiding his home did you see the video of that no his was pacing, he? And, and and he's on the phone, and you could you could just feel the anguish. Uh, where was he? He he wasn't there, was he? No, he was somewhere near the airport. Yeah, didn't he fly to Africa or something? Oh, here we go. You you found it, Caleb? Yeah. Of him, damn. Caleb, what's your cat's name? <laughs> this is Pam. She got pawned off on us by uh, my in-laws. Found out that they were deathly allergic. And so we are like, do you guys want a cat? And said, sure. So now we have Pam. Following I, break. I, I've taken a liking to cats. And it's kind of a new thing for me. I mean, I've always, there's, you know, I've always been nice to them. I don't, not like a, not a cat hater, but I never fully enjoyed them until I got rid of the cat at Santa Cruz and the rats took over. Oh yeah, totally. it's really nice having her around because like cats are must on a, in a, for a farm or barn. Absolutely, and they're so low maintenance. You don't have to do anything. Just chill. It's great. Uh, following breaking news of Diddy's Los Angeles Miami home being raided by federal agents on Monday, TMZ obtained footage capturing around three p.m. Pacific Standard Time that shows embattled music executive casually pacing outside of customs office in Miami Opalaka Executive Airport. According to an eyewitness, Puff and a few others stopped by the feds, stopped by the feds at the airport, after which members from the Department of Homeland Security arrived. And the footage, which can be seen below, Diddy is neither in custody nor is detained. He is merely walking by himself. Damn. Oh, so he's stressed to the max. You know, the, the conspiracy theories are saying that um, he... They, they, he's, that they've been using him all along as a pawn that since 1996 or 98 that they've told him, hey, we have proof that you did it. And so now you're going to be a good boy and listen to us. And so he's been some sort of pawn forever. I, whatever. I mean, once I've seen no proof of that, but that's been something that's out there. You know, with when you look at the kind of the, the path of Michael Jackson and, and, uh, R. Kelly, look where this P. Diddy thing could go. 
sex trafficking or, or murder. Those are the allegations. Um, he, he, it's, it's funny, they, they're making Kanye look normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the most normal one they have out there. One of my favorites. What a waste. What a, what a... I see things like this and I wonder, I, I wonder about like, so, so you were talking about how RFK, like once you crack the dam, the whole thing starts to sort of un unfold right before your eyes. You start seeing like, Hey, this, then this, then this, and you start basically getting red pilled, right? The phenomenon of getting red pilled. Yeah. Okay. L listen to, listen to this lady. Uh, there are no abortion clinics at the border. Here we go. Got abortion clinics at the border. They, they're telling us as American women, specifically black American women, we need to abort our children. But if you coming across the border with your baby, oh, come to the land of milk and honey, the great land of opportunity. We'll take care of you. Joe Biden even said, I'll give illegal immigrants coming across the border $400,000 a piece. Can you imagine? If they were to go to that black single mother living in the hood, not even four hundred thousand dollars, offer four thousand. Because I know some black women that can make something jump with four thousand. Offer her forty thousand. You know why they'll never give us that? Because they know that we'll never need them again. Welfare reminds me of, of an old man I used to date. I was in a relationship with him for 11 years. He would never marry me. Right. But whenever my bills were due, I would tell him he would give me just enough. He had a whole lot of money. He would give me just enough rent due, twelve hundred dollars. He'd give me twelve hundred dollars, not one cent over, because he knew that every month the rent was due that I would have to come back to him. He wouldn't give me a hundred thousand dollars and say, "Here, baby, bump that, go buy you a house and start you a business," because then he felt like I wouldn't need him. The government system is the same way when it comes to Black Americans. They'll never give us enough to get over and get up. It's only enough to make sure we continue to come back every 30 days so that we can remain slaves to their system. They don't got abortion clinics. She's kind of, she's a little confused. She's conflating stuff. She, she's but, great. But she's, she's great. close, man. But she's, she's close. She's great. It's profound. It's fundamentally correct. You're a white yeah. nitpick. Um, do, you know, do you know why Asians have had the problem I can't get into Harvard they don't count as a minority and you know you know what their sin is being too smart no there's not enough of them hmm. there's not enough and so it's not it's not they're not they're not they're not an appropriate target for the government largesse that buys votes and destroys people's lives hmm We could create if you if you you know if you you give me the money and I'll show you how to create uh, uh, fatherless homes, high unemployment, and fill the jails all with Asians. There's a way to do that, and what you have to do is you have to you have to pay them just like she was talking about the rent. Treat Asians just like you do black people, and pretty soon they'll suffer from what look like the 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 discrepancies of race hey i i think that asian asian hate movement was a seed planted in that right hey we're gonna you guys should start playing the victim too i think that that whole campaign was it was the planting the seeds for that you know what thomas uh Sowell said also about the asians versus the plight of uh the melanated is the melanated people went into politics to try to solve their problems and the Asians didn't because they weren't allowed to. And so they put their head down and just started working. And, the, and, and it's, so that became a cultural difference that this sort of like, Hey, uh, it's, it's kind of like what you said about Obamacare. Uh Oh guys, you better take full responsibility and accountability for yourself. Fucking hospitals and medicines about to take a shitter. And that's what Asians did with their life. And now, you know, on average, they make twice as much as white people in the United States. They you know who else? Work. You know who else makes a shit ton of money, and I and I don't remember the exact, but they, but they they stand out like like Jews and 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 Chinese immigrants with advanced I do know. Degrees, it's it's uh, Nigerians, uh, native uh, Nigerians, I think it is. Yep, yep, yep. 
I think that they are the single most. Uh, they're like, kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but they're not considered black either by the left. Just so you know, they're a they're Africans. I could take my I could take my eight kids and and put four of them on the plantation, and make the other four go out to work and fend for themselves, and you'd be able to see the difference in their outcomes at forty years of age. It, it, this could be done to anybody. Right. Uh, what are the Nigerians uh, doing to make money? You know what? Uh, Business. Iran and ironically, also, they're all crazy, highly educated. Like, there's a crazy amount of Nigerian doctors and pharmacists. And I met a guy that came over here with it, with, was in a master's program in chemistry and he started driving a car at night and pretty soon he's doing 30 hours a week of chemistry and 40 hours a week of car driving and by the time he gets his phd in chemistry he's got like 40 cars he's running and when he's when he graduated he finally got the phd he couldn't afford to do chemistry he had a he had a, a business with his, you know like and by the time we come around the kid's got 100 cars and people oh, drive him. He doesn't even have to drive it. He's a limo tycoon. He can't afford to do the chemistry. I know two. Know? Yeah. I know two Nigerians that figured out how to make money with Jesse Smollett. <laughs> Juicy <laughs> Smollett. <laughs> I liked how they came clean. That was pretty funny. Oh, it yeah. Was so quick, too. Yeah. It was so oh, good. Yeah. He paid us. Uh, Greg, do you know anything about fenbendazole for cancer treatment? Fenbendazole. Yeah. While the fenbendazole was initially formulated for veterinary use, preliminary research suggests that fenbendazole may inhibit cancer cell growth and induce cancer cell death through various mechanisms such as disruption of microtubule formation and inhibition of glucose uptake. Is that the new ivermectin? Is that what that is? Hey, did you see the uh, the three judge panel that ruled against the uh, FDA and their statements around ivermectin? And did you catch that uh, El Malo Gato? I did. I did see that. That was uh, was was that a few months ago? I, I don't know. I, I got it yesterday. I think I pushed it to you and. Uh, matt maybe or someone but i haven't i just i read it way too fast entertaining or feeding the kids and needed to look at it again but i thought it was profound but it's they, funny when you google it, it still down says, their tweets one was that you're come on people you're not a horse or a cow on the yeah. use of ivermectin that's right hey and listen judge, when you, judge made him take that down when you google ivermectin fda the first thing that pops up is why you should not use ivermectin to treat or prevent but then if you scroll down a little you immediately get to uh you immediately get to the story of course has agreed to remove and stop reposting several social media messages suggesting ivermectin FDA removing ivermectin social media posts and publications. Drugs some doctors use to treat COVID is intended for animals and not humans. The move settles a lawsuit filed by three doctors who accuse the agency of hurting their medical practices. Oh, well, that's not the reason why I want it to be removed. Let me see. Uh... Yeah, but the court, the court ruled they were in the wrong. Okay, this, it wasn't the ruling the FDA was looking for. Right, right. Do you remember the ivermectin uh, pharmaceutical plant that burned down during COVID? Do you remember that? Like in Taiwan or some shit? Wasn't that crazy? Do you remember that story? Yeah. The FDA has already taken down, uh, according to a settlement agreement, uh, the, the FDA has already taken down a page that stated, should I take ivermectin to prevent or treat COVID-19? No. We'll also delete posts, including one that reads, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it. 
According to a settlement agreement filed with federal court in Southern Texas, the FDA will also remove another page titled why you should not use ivermectin to treat or prevent COVID-19 within 21 days. The article on the page further says ivermectin neither authorized or approved the use of the drug to prevent or treat COVID-19 in humans or animals. For those of you who do not remember, there was no advice from any doctors or any politicians or anyone on any preventive care or any treatments that you could do by yourself. It was all run to CVS, get your swab and take your shot a hundred percent across the board. They were not allowed to offer any other therapies, home therapies. Them, them taking this down in the face of litigation suggests that this was on the cusp of demonstrating ivermectin's effectiveness. That's what, that's what was going on. That's the, it, it, it wouldn't be that it's still ineffective and you had, you had to pull that shit down. They were looking at the filings and someone said, you know what? These fuckers are going to show that ivermectin worked. Then what do we do? Well, then just invest in the production of ivermectin. I, I think that there's not a, um, I think the patent on it's over. I don't think it's a profitable drug to make. Oh. Or like, or a hugely profitable. All right, I take it back. All right, great show. I don't trust. I don't trust public health authorities on any subject. Not the efficacy or safety of any vaccine. Nothing on nutrition. Nothing on exercise. Nothing. It would be a combination of of. Wrong or a lie? They've gotten every important issue wrong. Ivermectin is the most used drug in the U.S. military. It's been safe for 60 plus years. I think the guy who invented it won the Nobel Prize. I think you're right, too. Are you sure it's not Motrin and not Ivermectin? <laughs> Ibuprofen, most used drug in the U.S. military? I Ivermotrin? Hey, Greg, what microscope were you... Uh, do you remember the name of it? I forget. You know, and I thought we'd ordered them even, right? That seems familiar. I Sometimes I order things on Amazon. And I never hear anything again. I should dig through. But... The way to go is the ones that broadcast the image to push the image to an iPad. You don't want to have the kid to, to fuck around with the ocular and all that shit. Have the James My Thurber story, the experience of where he drew his eye in biology class. He's looking in the microscope. He's supposed to be oh. looking at some and to teach you <laughs> you've drawn your eyeball. <laughs> oh my goodness. You did get, do you remember the name of the company? Was it called Amazon? No, but I'll look again. I'll look oh, again. Okay. Because I'd like to do that. Digital scope for iPad. I got a full color, uh, uh, beautiful uh, vinyl periodic chart. Oh, I saw a picture of that. Yeah, that was, oh wait, no. I saw the glass statue periodic chart, black model, yeah, or the sense. glass model. I tell you, getting a little boy interested in chemistry is about the easiest thing you'll ever do. I mean, we we were throwing sodium in water, right? Looking at that. And uh, after the war, uh, the U.S. military dumped 20,000 20, pounds of sodium into a lake. And it's it was 1947. It's old black and white film. Epic, epic pyrotechnics. But uh, there's there's a there's some really good videos of just throwing sodium into water and you know you know you know you got the kid when Rhett goes wait wait dad wait 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 back that up he's getting closer so I think he's seen half of the videos on sodium on YouTube and we're just like doing an element of the day right. Look, it breaks through the ice, thick ice, and then... Muffled explosion. <laughs> the music's great. I love that. The music and the voice are so 
The same so, guy that narrated the Lone Ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thousand pounds of highly dangerous metallic sodium head for destruction in Lake Lenore, Washington. The government surplus chemical ignites and explodes when wet. The alkali lake is devoid of fish and forms an admirable disposal spot. A 3,500-pound container admirable. of sodium hurtles into the lake and crashes through a foot of ice. As the water seeps in, smoke rises through a series of muffled explosions. That's awesome. Objective conversation. I work for a telemedicine staffing agency, and we work with companies that prescribed ivermectin and hydrochloroquine. Yeah. I bet we did 500,000 consults with people and had zero negative effects brought to our attention. Wow. Miracle. See, here, here again, without, without any evidence for its efficacy, the behavior of those that are against it creates an enormous plausibility. Like, God, these guys are acting like this shit works. Do you get that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Heidi Krum, uh, this show is getting taken down, so we might as well talk about whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I, you'd have to be an idiot to go by the World Health Organization. An idiot. There's millions of them, dude. Millions. Of idiots? Bill billions of people who follow the World Health Organization. Doctors, millions of doctors. Jay Wade, Tennessee affiliation owners heading to Santa Cruz for the first time today. Any recommendations for places to throw tea? Throw tea. What's what's going on? What's wired? Do I need to go to Santa Cruz? Sure, come. What are they bringing people in one state at a time or what's going on? Is it uh, <laughs> No, they don't I don't think I don't No, I don't think CrossFit I don't think this is a CrossFit HQ thing. I don't think CrossFit actually has a considers Santa Cruz its home anymore. Let me Tennessee affiliation owners heading to Santa Cruz. Jay Wade, I need more information. Any recommendations? Yeah. Give us give us some make it enticing and I'll get on a plane and we'll go to cilantro. Well, that's enticing enough. <clears throat> Hey, um, it, uh, go by the water. Hang out by the water. It's fun. Hey, I'm going to Home Depot soon to do... Um, my mom's getting... What are those called? Those chairs? You have them too. They're different than yours, I bet. But uh, we're going to Home Depot. Uh, Adirond Adirondack. 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 Those are Adirondack. nice chairs. Adirondack. Adirondack. Get those get in my the front plastic yard. ones or the... Uh... I don't know. She just said to me, hey, last night I was at her house and she said, hey, can I come by your house in the morning and we go to Home Depot? I said, yeah, I need a can of paint from there anyway. Let's go. Get the plastic one. Your weather there, no, they, no wood will hold up. Oh, right. That makes sense. I got some wood ones with like a wicker backing. They're I already moved I just from the move they already started falling apart. It's kind of sad. Oh, that's my me too. My wife just said my son woke up and said his stomach was better and then he said it wasn't. Yeah, I woke up this morning, my stomach was fine, and then all of a sudden it went to shit. Oh, here, uh oh, here we go. Jay Wade. Just to visit uh and coming for Yosemite USA weightlifting masters nationals, and my wife loves Steinbeck. Oh, that's cool. Hey, you should, if you're out in Steinbeck country, you should swing by the ranch. Reach out oh, to Dave. That's really neat. I'm glad yeah. we asked. That's yeah. super cool. When are the, what are the dates? When are you there? Sounds like today, right? Is that Was that the um, Tennessee affiliation uh, owners heading to Santa Cruz for the first time today? How long is he there? Yeah, how long are you I there? got my kids here till the, the Portland kids go back on the 28th or 29th. Are you, are you itching to come see me? I mean, to visit your house? Yeah. Yeah, come. Especially if the weather cooperates. There you go. From today till Friday. Are you showing the... Oh, okay. I'm going to look at the weather. See. 
God, dude. It's supposed to rain uh, basically between until Saturday, and then the sun's here. Oh, shit. Next Friday, 71 degrees. All right. So starting Sunday, it's all good. Bring your kids, Greg. Let's yeah, I'm, I'm itching how's, to get down to the boat in San Diego, too, Sophie. How's your wife? Can she fly right now, or is she too big? Yeah, she's great. She yeah. She can do everything. Is she nesting? <laughs> is, she, is she nesting? Is she uh, want to stay home and, like, not move? You know, by home, I mean in the in, in Arizona, or is she up for a trip? No, we're going. We're going. We got some glamping thing this weekend that we're doing in Arizona. In yeah. Wow. And uh, we've got a, a Bora Bora trip and a Kauai trip, and now she's that she's. You're still going to Bora Bora? Fuck yeah! She yes, yeah, she's going. Wow. Greg, how how far along is she in her pregnancy? uh we're due uh end of august jeez louise i can fly also heidi will go <laughs> if your wife can't go <laughs> yeah i was hoping she'd get so big it would she'd slow down a little you know hey this is funny if i was as rich as greg i would never glamp again listen that's what he would have never glamped before he had money now he has to do <laughs> <laughs> Greg never thought he'd glamp either. So I've so, got this. I've got this. Greg giant would rather sleep at a rest wheel. area in his truck than fucking go glamping. I bet. Check this out. So we got we got this giant fifth wheel, and I I would like to compete the fifth wheel against a uh, big flatbed steak bed truck in and and bring like a mega tent generators. Flat screen TV, lazy boy chairs, awnings. I think you could. I think you could beat the luxury of any fifth wheel in a in what would take be a four hour setup off Are the back taking, of a flatbed truck. When you say you're going glamping, you're going in your fifth wheel. You're not going to one of those places. No, it's it's a it's a it's a setup. We're not bringing anything. Oh, okay. One of those big old dome tents that you can see through in the night. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a lighted tent that has a uh, a rain fly that uh, you can see stars, but the rain won't come through. Oh, that's amazing. That's you such think a my, beautiful sight. You think my kids would like being there? Where? Uh, uh, the Peter Sellers movie? Mm, I don't know. I remember seeing it as a kid and thinking it was so weird. I didn't get it. I didn't get it until just now when you said, told me what it was about. Yeah. All right. I'm going, I'm off to Home Depot. Thanks for coming on. Hey, great to see everyone hear you. Caleb, good to hear your voice again, see your face. I, I hope cilantro cilantro tortures you today. I hope it festers in your mind until you like lepi lepiu head to the airport. When when can you when could you go to San Diego to get on a boat? I, to I can, there's up? only there's a the, like next month there's like a six day window where I'm kind of stuck here, and other than that, I'm wide open. I can move anything. So they're outfitting the boat now with all the fishing stuff, and we we put bike racks on it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. All right, thank you. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you, Greg. Bye. I like that show. Yeah, it's fun. I feel like we covered a lot of topics today. Oh, yeah. Went from Black Box Summit to P. Diddy. I had to post something. They were going to deactivate the um, old uh, YouTube channel that I had. That was the Josh, Matt, and um, Sevon channel. So I had to post something on there. Did what I post not work? Oh, did you post something? Yeah, I just... Oh, I posted something then again yesterday. I fuck sorry, I forgot that you did that. Well, anyway, and it's funny because people, all, a bunch of people think like that that account's live again or that that's like a new video. <laughs> I want to see uh, who's fighting in the UFC today. Uh, There's fights today. 
Uh, no, sorry. Uh, this Friday. Oh shit. God, I don't even. That's the the women's flyweight division is so weak. I don't even know who those two are. Yeah, me neither. Chris Weidman's and, fighting though. Yeah, I see that. And Vincent Luque and Joaquin Buckley. Those will be good. I can't believe Chris Weidman's still fighting at all. I know it's wild. Who's fighting on the prelim card? Oh, the guy fighting the main event and that Nate guy. He's good. Oh, Herbert Burns. Is that Gilbert Burns' brother? Jesus. Looks like him. Jeez. Yeah. All right. That'll be fun. Is it? I hope it's at night. When there's, okay. I did the news show yesterday for the first time in a long time. Yeah. How was it? I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, I, I mean, it's a lot of old news. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see what, let me see what the, uh, let me see what the comments say about it. Let me see. Dang. You should see the picture that somebody just sent in our group chat. That's so good. I don't see it. It's in the... the Is uh, it writing? The writing? No, no. It just got sent from the other group chat. Oh, oh. Oh, shit. That's dope. Wow. All right. Let's post it. Hey, this is... So, this is very interesting right here. <laughs> Did, did someone just sent this to us. Santa Cruz, California, March 27, 2024. CrossFit LLC has announced a plan to offer 50 $10,000 CrossFit Foundation school fund grants in the first half of 2024. Domestic and international schools that want to form nonprofit affiliates for students. Since 2019, CrossFit has awarded 57 grants. Okay, you know what's so funny about this? Mm. Oh, shit. God, I hope I... Uh, we know that healthier people make the world around them better. So our, I wonder if you can say that without getting canceled. So our goal is to bring the life-changing potential of CrossFit to more people in more ways, said Don Fall, CEO of CrossFit. Change happens at a local event, and these grants are helping schools introduce the concept of fitness for a lifetime to one child at a time. So this is very misleading. There's a guy, Josh Murphy, that's been around since the fucking dawn of time with CrossFit. Did you meet Josh Murphy at Greg's house? Mm, probably. I can't remember. A big beard, tall, strong as shit looking dude. I think like he's a dude who puts on a 50 pound ruck and walks all night. He's like that kind of dude. Okay. He's been running the CrossFit Foundation in some iteration forever. He's been around since when Greg was building schools in Africa. And I think, I, I think that when Greg sold the company, this foundation, Josh has basically just been running this foundation for um, solo, separate from CrossFit, I think. I think maybe Eric Rosa was a little bit interested in this thing. This thing's just been sitting on $350,000 cash forever, I think. Really? Yeah. This is a total... This reminds me of the health summit. It's sitting like... Cro line, not doing anything with it? I just feel like it's CrossFit taking credit for something that's like... A, this is like a little misleading. God. This, I, I bet you this, you know what's funny? I bet you this will be the, ironically, I think that this will be also, this, I would be very curious to ask Don. I think this is the end of the CrossFit. Um, God, are they claiming it's CrossFit Inc. doing this? CrossFit changed uh, local grants. I think this is the end of the grant program. I think it's just money they've been sitting on forever and they're just going to, and they're just trying to figure out a way to, to, to shut, shut it down. I'd be curious. Maybe I'm wrong. Some, that, that 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 doesn't smell right. Like, yeah, something here does not smell right. This is a, a PR stunt. 
It's like saying I got drunk and crashed into a tree and but I saved 10 people's lives coming the other, and then and but the article says man saves 10 people's lives coming the other direction on a highway and decides to hit tree instead of running into them. I mean it's just <laughs> you know what I mean it's like <clears throat> uh Yeah, something something's weird with this. This is this is uh Uh, please don't share. Oh, uh, okay. What is this? Oh, 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 wow. Hey, does Daniel Brandon's movie comes out today, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I want to go over to the rad. What, oh, I type in rad into YouTube. Oh no, I got by. Oh, <laughs> I get bicycle movie. Let me see if they have that shit scheduled yet. How do I get to there? Oh. Wow. I don't see it scheduled. Oh, really? On YouTube? It's not up there? I thought. Oh, it was no. Three way. Daniel Brandon. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. At 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today. Three waiting. Oh, God. I hope they didn't over stylize this thing. Holy shit. It looks like a Barbie movie. Oh, Nelly. Hmm. Interesting. What else did I see? I saw something on Brian's friends. Um, I saw something on Brian's. What did I see here? Oh, he hasn't tomorrow. Uh, oh no, that's in April. Okay, Brian's interviewing Matt Fraser. I wonder if that's going to be live. Didn't he just do an interview with Danielle Brandon? Where the fuck is that? How do you find? How do, how the fuck does YouTube work? Look at fucking Brian's account. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not suggesting my accounts any better, but uh, home. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see the Daniel Brandon interview. Oh, is this it? No. Okay. Uh, oh. Videos. I click on videos. Oh, there it is. Okay. How is sure. that not the first one on the page? I don't know. We get we get screwed like that. Too. It's because he doesn't have it organized right. We don't have ours organized right, too. I don't know if they have the tools to allow you to organize it right. This stuff used to not be like this a year ago. This home video shorts lives thing. What do you mean? It used to be all one? Yeah, it used to somehow be all smashed together and, and it was shit was easier to find and it was all there should be a button you can hit and just everything is chronological. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. Whether it's live or a video or a short. Yeah, just like, hey, I want to see everything this person's done. Anyway, all right. Uh, and then, um, w uh, what's Pedro doing today? Coffee, pods, and wads. Let's see. <laughs> um, is that, oh yeah, okay. Around the whiteboard. Ooh, who's on it? Carolyn Prevo. Colton Mertens. Holy shit. There's always one person I don't know. Who's that dude? Hain oh shit, Aunt Haynes. Oh yeah. Holy shit. Wow, dude. Okay. On wow. Hong Kong time. Can I like this already? Can I th oh, yeah. Here we go. Boom. Sweet. God, that's cool. Colton Mertens, Aunt Haynes, and Carolyn Preview. Canada, America, and Hong Kong. I think Aunt Haynes can get a little fired up, too, so that'll be, that'll be fun I to watch. Could you tell I said that with an Asian accent? Asian accent? Hong Kong. Hong Kong, or do you like some right? Oh, well, I'm the whiteboard. Hong Kong. Welcome to Hong Kong. Welcome to first episode of Wild the Whiteboard. Wow, that's good. You Are you going to have Brian on to discuss uh, Hiller? That would be fun. I don't know. I just want all that shit to go away, really. <laughs> I don't like to see... I, 
I don't I don't want to stress over if I don't want anyone I, I don't like the thought I, I really to be honest with you the biggest takeaway from the Hiller video for me is just what how many assholes there are in the world I just can't fucking believe the comments I cannot fucking believe the comments It's never going away the world's most toxic man Let's see. Let's see how my sporty Beth video is doing. I have to go. My mom. I bet you my mom's here. Uh, I just type in sporty Beth into. Uh, holy shit! Like, look. So look at her YouTube page. You go. Sh you go to her YouTube page and look at the number one video on there. Just sits there for <laughs> you. Oh, why? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I've been exposed. This is crazy. Why do you have to choose that picture? It's not flattering. So this is like, this is like, um, man, she was bracing people before, um, t before Hiller was bracing people. Yeah. Brian's tism got away from him again. Here's the thing. No one has to like, people shouldn't be, you shouldn't be in comments, just fucking hating on people. Especially when the, when the video is already critical, it's like, Hey, just watch it. And like, just text all your friends about it. And like, wouldn't it have been cooler if someone, like, you sent your condolences to Brian? Like, you're like, hey, dude, tough video. Uh, let me know if you need someone to talk to. Condolences? Or, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, like, hey, dude, sorry you're having that bump. And it sucks that, like. RIP to your reputation. Not sorry about it. Like, there's, like, there's 500 people in the comments and, like, two people said, hey, this sucks. I liked it better when you were getting along. Yeah, like, I think everyone, like. Shouldn't that be the sentiment? That seems like the healthier sentiment. Like no one no, was always people. There's always people in the circle around the fight yelling, "Yeah, fuck him up, beat his ass, fuck you." That's what's happening. Yeah. No, just make videos hating on people. Here's the thing. If there's this, I, I don't know. Do you think that the story I told? Um, about oh, oh, I don't even want to bring that up. And it gets worse. Here's the thing: I think that Brian told the story on that podcast, and Hiller uh, on that Jason CF Media podcast, and Hiller came back and told the story too. And so, whether that's good or bad, or they're just stories being told. But then to get in the comments and like f fuel it, like. No one even know. Most of the people in the comments probably don't even know either of those people. I don't know. I do know you shouldn't. You shouldn't ass pound people. But you shouldn't kick someone when they're down. Uh, I am a man doing CrossFit. The Sevon guy is it? I am a man doing CrossFit. Look at this comment. <laughs> this seven guy is a disgrace for crossfit and it's a shame that crossfit hq works with this narcissistic sexist uh it's not oh oh look at this guy samuel this guy oh this guy has a mental health this guy this guy's one of the guys who's always in the comments um bragging about how he's a phd yeah okay do you know who i'm talking about it's not no. surprising he's so toxic what do you, the, the, hey, by the way, if you're a man and you use that word toxic, that means you have low T. It's cl clinically proven. He's Big a Glassman gosh. brown noser and craps and crap sticks. Crap sticks? What does that even mean? I don't know. Can you zoom in on these comments? I want to read them too. Um, uh, can I? How do I? I don't even know how to. I don't know. It'll expand. Uh -huh. No, <laughs> never mind. Forget it. Anyway, I'm feeling a little left out that Brian got his own uh, ass pounding video. So I wanted to. Um... <laughs> you wanted to drum up more. Yeah. yeah. Listen, the old listen, listen, I got my own ass pounding video over here, <laughs> but I still don't understand why. I still don't understand why it has to sit at number one like that. Look, it goes one year than two weeks ago. That was a year ago. So she has it pinned. Is that how you do that? She must. Yeah, that kind of makes it. 
uh, Seema, don't you think that that makes it kind of though, like if you do that and you have that shit like just sitting there, that's basically means it's open season on her all the time too. She's basically standing at the mountaintop looking at me being like, yo, you want a piece? So, I mean, I think I'm allowed to like, anytime for comedy sake, I'm allowed to ass pound her. Uh, that Sporty Beth video is great. The only thing that I didn't like was you fawning all over that cunt Brooke Entz. Wow. Jesus, I like Brooke Entz. Jeez. Was I fawning over? I was fawning over. You said that video was good. That video was horrible. It's, it mischaracterized me. Uh, Athena needs uh, counseling and coaching. That's not what Hiller's about. All right. Uh, I have a piece on her that would ass pound her. Should I film it? Hiller knows about it. Ooh. Yeah, sure. Why not? Of course. I mean, there's a difference between storytelling, I think, and then just like just hating on people. <laughs> Trump or Biden? Are you fucking kidding me? Mega Trump. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Uh, I started Jack watching Jack. I started watching Roadhouse yesterday. The new one? Yeah. And Let me just say this. There was a time <laughs> I don't know. I know I'm jaded because it's so funny. I spoke to someone, they're like, hey, there at least there's no DEI shit in it. In the first 15 minutes, like I see all the DEI shit. Like it's just like it's just screaming at me. I don't think it's as bad as other new movies. Right. I agree. It, it doesn't I, like it. It's like yelling, not screaming. It's like yeah. Shouting. It, it, it's like watching commercials on the UFC. If you do you watch UFC, like if you see a white person in a commercial during the UFC, like you used to see just a full mix of people. Now every commercial is just black people. It's amazing. Oh wow. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I don't well, watch commercials though. So now you know. Now you know. And it's like, hey, dude, like you've completely overcompensated. Yeah. <clears throat> it, I don't know if it sucks. It's 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 not bad. And and Jake Gyllenhaal, the characters are all the acting's either really shitty or all the characters are supposed to be really weird. I mean, that's kind of how the original one was, just kind of like weird actors and storylines kind of off. And I don't know if you like really quick, like elaborate fight scenes. Those those are pretty good. Yeah, no 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 white males. Look at Hiller. <laughs> <laughs> the Labrador saw tens. Okay, I have to go. My mom's probably waiting for me. Let me call my mom really quick here. See if she's here. Um, it sucks bad. If you like movies, just to watch movies and just watch it. It's it's on Amazon and you pay for it with. I mean, since you, if you have Prime, you just get it for free. Yeah. Like if you like your packages. So, hi, honey. Are you? I'm coming. Done? Yeah, I'm coming now. Okay. Okay. I love All you. Right, bye. 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 All right. Gotta go. Uh, do I have another podcast today? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We have the Daniel Brandon documentary review. Right. All right. Talk to you guys soon. I'm going to go watch it right now. Bye-bye.